Back them up, boys. Good morning, church. And good morning to the people by internet. We're glad you're with us today. Okay. There's something about that name. Father, I come before you today to let your words come from my mouth across my lips, by my tongue. That you would have me say, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, and I thank you, Father, for the opportunity. Amen. I've, uh, Been a week desiring to spend time with the Holy Spirit. And you might know that uh, when you try to do that, there will be a lot of things that happen. Uh, some I think were my fault, some I don't think so. I know as Miss Gloria, Miss Gloria, my wife spoke on Wednesday night and pastor, and pastor last Sunday on the Holy Spirit. And the way things are, are going in the earth today, I believe we all know that we need the Holy Spirit more than ever. I, uh, I did a lot of uh, reminiscing. Some of the things that I did is I took our camper and I went down to a lake where I didn't have reservations. And there was no shade where I ended up. And I wanted peace and quiet to be alone with the Holy Spirit. And my air conditioners work real good, but they're real loud without a break. It's just a steady hum, you know. And so, anyhow, I left that situation a little bit early. And I was brought, the Holy Spirit brought me back to Deuteronomy. Now, I haven't read Deuteronomy for quite a while. I mean, now I've read through the Bible, you know, Bible in a year and all that, but there's not much studying went on when I did that. I was reading, you know. And I remember when I started searching for the Lord after I'd uh, gotten some sense back in my head and and uh, was trying to find out what this life was all about. And uh, I remember reading and reading and reading, and I'm sure I mentioned it before, but I had taken a couple weeks vacation and went to Florida, and I just laid on the beach and read the Bible and read the Bible and read the Bible, not even really on the beach, up on the, by the swimming pool of the hotel I stayed at. But. And finally, I, I wasn't any closer to, to understanding anything than what I was when I got there. I'd been told to read the New Testament because the Old Testament would be confusing. So I had tried that. And then I'd went over and read the, some of the Old Testament. But I remember what tripped the trigger in my brain. It was about 4.30 in the morning. It's raining, something terrible. And I'm in either Kentucky or Tennessee on my way back home. And I mean, it's raining hard. But all of a sudden, it hit me. Abraham had faith. 
and that set me free. That was the first thing that I got. Abraham had faith in God. And from there on, I started searching more. But that was the key. Abraham had faith in God. See, when he took Isaac up to offer him for a sacrifice, at that time, God had never raised the dead. So think about that faith that he had. He knew that God would, but how did he know that? It kind of goes back to the same thing Gloria made mention the other night, and I mentioned the last time I ministered, and that was the day that I realized that I was saved, I cried all the way home. And I, but how did I know I was saved? God didn't tell me I was saved. I mean, people didn't tell me I was saved. And Gloria and I was discussing this on the way home the other night. Even though I was a heathen here, and it changed here just like that, the reason, the reason I knew that I was saved was because my spirit was connected to God's spirit. Everything changed in a moment. And I knew it. Nobody in this world told me. Nobody in this world knew it. Until I got home crying, told my daughter, you know. But nobody knew that except I knew it. So how did you know it? Your Holy Spirit was connected with God. Amen. And His Holy Spirit. Your, your Spirit is holy. You know, in, in my studying and We are to serve the Lord. When we say serve, in my mind, now I can only, I can't talk for you, but in my mind, that means work of some sort. I've got to work. But I, what I see in serving the Lord today is, is taken on a different connotation, I'll say. My serving the Lord is to love as he says to love. It is to have the faith that he tells us to have. It is to believe because he says only believe. When we do those things and we're serving the Lord, things are going to happen in our life that people are going to recognize. You know, if somebody would have come to me before I was hungry, now that was, this is me, I was hungry, and started beating me up with the Word of God or the Bible, I would have shut you off in a heartbeat. And I would have probably said some things I shouldn't have said that I'd have had to repent for later. But see, that didn't happen for me. And... and what I've seen here in Deuteronomy, and Moses is talking to the people, and he's telling them that he can't go into the promised land. And if I remember correctly, in one place it says, because of y'all. Well, he got fed up, you know, and he did things he shouldn't have done. But I was also talking with Gloria the other night. You know, if we're following God by faith and we only believe and we got the word to back it up and God says to do something and we question it, we're not serving God. In reading this, in reading this I, I'm going to read a little bit of the scriptures here. Uh, I wanted to touch a little bit on this before I started doing that. But Moses is telling 
the people what God told him to say. And he tells them that he can't go into the promised land because of him, or because of them. And some of the things that uh, I also discussed with Gloria about, you know, it's a good thing to, to do that, you know. But if God told them that I'm going to give you this land, go and take it, and I'll go before you, why would you send 12 spies out? And Moses says it sounded good to him. I'm going to go before you and take care of it for you, but he sends out, they send out 12 spies. I don't know that they should have done that. Because the result of that is every warrior had to die off before they could cross the Jordan. And another thing that I picked up in reading that, and two and a half families that were to cross the Jordan, where when you cross the Jordan, the Jordan is a state of change. Yeah. Two and a half families, they're going to go back and take the old land. And he let them do it. But that wasn't a promised land, was it? No. It wasn't a promised land. They were told to go take this, and I'll give it to you. I'll prepare the way for you. But now we want to keep what we've seen over here. Because we haven't seen what's over there yet. After he told them what they were going to do and how they were going to displease God, because that's what Deuteronomy is. And you know what is going on today yet? Right here, right now in this country. He told them what they were going to do, but he still gave them the promised land. They crossed the river of change, and then in time they went back to their old ways. The way that we have to keep from doing that, myself included, is I have to stay in here and stay in faith. Because I'm telling you what, just the news alone, that TV will just beat me to death if I just keep watching it. It just beats me up terrible. Now, I know I'm supposed to know what's going on, but boy, we need to pray. We need to walk in the Spirit, just as it says. It tells me in here, that's just for a second, Let's go over to John 4.24. Then we'll come back over to, to Deuteronomy. There are so many things that I've read that jumped right out at me in, in, in the Bible that I just don't have time to touch on all of it today. But I have to believe that the Holy Spirit is leading me. It tells us in, in Genesis that we are created after God in his image. Okay? But it says in John 20, 4, 24, it says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. My mind had a picture of him being like we are, walking around. It doesn't say anywhere that God was made out of clay or dirt or whatever. It doesn't say that. It says we were. And then he breathed his spirit into us. So when we talk about, like Pastor talked about, Miss Gloria talked about, and a lot of pastors are talking about today, walking in the Spirit is how we're to communicate with God. Now there's just little things sometimes. It's real easy, and then also in my reading, I see, I know Jesus says that there's only one good, and that's the Father. Well, and we know that the flesh is carnality. 
And then we read in the scriptures where it says, Paul saying, I do what I would not do, and I don't do what I would do, and I do what I shouldn't do, and blah, blah, blah. Very confusing stuff. But it's all the flesh. Because I want when I want, or I think I need, or whatever. And I get so easily away from this when I should be over here. I'm saying, I'm saying all of this because I don't know, I don't think I'm unique in having family or friends that don't know the Lord. Let's, get, let's go back over here to Deuteronomy. I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Let's, we'll start over here about uh, Deuteronomy 1. Uh, 122, and this is, this is what I've mentioned here already. <clears throat> and it's Moses talking, and he said, And ye came year, near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search out the land, and bring us word again by, the, by what way we must go up, and into the cities we shall come. Now didn't God say he'd lead the way? That he prepare the path. I mean, that's what I'm seeing. And they went and turned up into the mountain and came unto the valley of Eskel and searched it out. And they took the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down unto us and brought us word again and said, It is a good land which the Lord our God doth give us. Notwithstanding, God, they say God's going to give us, but notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And ye murmured in your tents and said, because, God, the, because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the land, hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Verse 28, Whither, whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up, and heaven, and moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakins. How many times does the Lord tell us something, and we share it with somebody that we shouldn't have shared it with? And the discouragement starts. Did I really hear God? Did he really say that? Right there. Then the Lord, the Lord your God which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. They'd already seen Yet in this thing, ye did not believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in fires by night and show you by what way ye should go and in the cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and swear, saying, Surely, there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see the good land which I swear to give to their fa unto their fathers. Their murmuring cost them everything. Cost them their good land and they died in the desert. If the Lord saved you, like he saved me anyway, why would I possibly think that he would let me down anywhere past? He took me from here and put me over here, and I didn't do anything other than give up. I made mention about friends and family and such. And uh, 
that don't know the Lord, that are searching the Lord, or, or searching. You know, a lot of times, and I can, I can speak from my past, I had to try a lot of things before I ever tried the Lord. And, uh, you know, I prayed, I, pra I prayed for several family members and uh, one in particular, and, and the Lord led me to call her up yesterday. She's a, my youngest daughter. And uh, I've prayed for, for a long time because there was no communication between her and me. Uh, it, it just didn't work, and I didn't know how to hand, how to, to bridge that barrier. But my prayer has always been that somebody would cross her path. Amen. And you know, sometimes... Now, somebody's crossed her path, and I don't know him very well. Uh, I'm not saying that everything she's doing today is right. That's not what I'm saying. But I believe somebody's crossed her path that brought about change. And uh, in the conversation that we had, She's, a, uh, she's not, you know, she's not a teenager. She's lived her life. And she's recognized, and she may be watching today, uh, some things in her life that weren't right. And now, even though, you know, I prayed what I prayed, and I wanted it so bad for her to see that there's another way She's in a lot of pain right now. There's, there's pain for each and every one of us. And I can look at my past that when, when, I, when I got sober and recognized so many things, the things that I had to deal with, they just don't disappear. You know, it's not just like that and they're gone. God forgives you. But there's some things that you got to go through to grow up. And sometimes it hurts. It sucks. You know? But what I remember so vividly, and that's, that's the pain that I have, that I'm feeling right now, and, and I'm just like my spirit is groaning, that I want her so much to not have to go through that. But when you're all the way down here, and I'm not saying she is, but that's where I was, there's only one way to go, and that's up. And change is not easy. I've mentioned that before. Change into what? You know, we can say, all he needs to do is change. Change into what? I am who I am. How can I change? First, I have to recognize some things in my life that are not right. And my beginning of change, or I believe anybody's beginning of change, is we stop doing what we did. Because I don't know what to do differently, but the first thing is to stop. And there's a lot of things in this country right now going on politically and the news and everything else that it just needs to stop. In order to change anything, we have to recognize things. But right off the bat, you don't necessarily know what to do other than stop. I can only speak from what's happened in my life and I don't know who likes him and who don't, and it don't make any difference. But I remember another thing. I was listening one time. It was suggested, listen to Charles Stanley. And in Charles Stanley, I heard him say one thing that, that I've never forgot. If you're a new Christian and you're just beginning, 
and you don't know what to do, one of the first things that you can start at is, I believe it's in James, but it says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Those are three simple things, but boy, that's a big beginning if you can handle that. I'm not going to read all the scriptures out of Deuteronomy, but I am going to say that, you know, the 12 men went out. They came back. They were pleased with what they seen, but their flesh took over, and they didn't believe God because they got in fear. We never know who's watching on that internet. Trust God with all your heart. It cost them to where they could not enter into the promised land. How many of us know that God has a promise? He has promises for us. He told us in Deuteronomy. He tells us all through this Bible if we're just our hearts right to see that he's got all these promises for us if we don't falter. He tells us to build each other up and edify each other. That's serving the Lord. Those are not all work. It's not manual labor. Sometimes we need to open up with each other. And not be afraid to open up. Sometimes we cover things up because we don't want somebody to know our weaknesses. But God knows them. They turn around after Moses tells them what the Lord says. In verse 37, And the Lord was angry with me for your sakes. That's what I'm saying. He's blaming, Moses blaming them now. Thou shalt not go in thither, but Joshua the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither, encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which he said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had not, no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither. And unto them I will give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn it and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. How many times did we miss it? And then we want to turn around and try and make it up. God wants us prompt. And then turn around and watch what they do here. And the Lord said unto me, say unto them, go not neither, go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest you be smitten before your enemies. So I spake unto you, and you would not hear, but rebelled against the commandment of God, and went presumptuously up into the hill. And the Amorites, which dwell in the mountain, came out against you and chased you as bees do, destroyed you in Seir, even unto Hormah. And ye returned and wept before the Lord. But the Lord would not hearken unto your voice, nor give ear unto you. I don't want that to happen. So ye abode in Kadesh many days according unto the days that ye abode there. Then we turned and took our journey, chapter 2, verse 1, into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me and saying, now this is, this is just something. 
ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn ye northward. In other words, you've went around this mountain enough. It's time to stop going around this same old mountain. Round and round and round the same old mountain. That is not what he wants us to do. Go over to Romans 8.1. The Lord sent a Savior for us. Jesus was here on earth. We all know what he did for us. He hung on that cross so that we might be saved. He did a lot more for us than just save us. But when we accept him, we are saved and we are his. And he says, Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law is of the spirit of life. And for the law is the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that I, it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. His righteousness is our righteousness. He gave it to us. That the righteousness of the law might be filled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. I want all that peace that I can get. Just little things happened to me uh, just, you know, on this, this last week. And I know it was the Holy Spirit. But I had a fellow come up to me. I'm getting ready to put some diesel in my truck. And he comes up and starts talking, and I just filled up my other truck. Some of you men already know what I'm going to say. But I grabbed the nozzle, and I'm talking to him. And just as I looked down, just as I started to squeeze the handle, guess what? I had regular gasoline going into a diesel. But I didn't do it. But I, I got distracted for a minute, and then all of a sudden I looked. And I, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was at a dumping station leaving the trailer park, and... Uh, I just got through, and I'm talking to a gentleman there. He says he liked this and liked that, and I'm paying attention to him. I get in my truck and start to pull away. And you know, them trailers don't always follow exactly behind that truck. 
and I'm going around a tree and all of a sudden I glance in the rear view mirror and it's not going to make it. Hit the brakes, backed up. Those were not by accident. And there was even some plastic laying by this tree. Somebody else didn't stop. The reason I know I got out and looked, it wasn't my plastic, because I've seen him laying there. You know what I mean? But thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It tells us when we come close to him, he'll come close to us. He'll be nigh of us. He'll lead our ways. The way that we can do this and... and, and the whole thing to me is to be attractive to other people of what's going on in our life because of what our Lord is doing. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Okay. I want to go over to Psalms 112. You know, when I read through this Bible and I see other people's errors, I don't try, I try not to look at it as a judgment. I try to look at it as, but for the grace of God, there go I. That I don't make that same error. You know, because what I see in here, and, and, and I hate it, I hate it, I grew up under this. My father always told me that, and, and I had it in my head, and I don't remember exactly how he said it, but it, it has to do with America's always got to be knocked to its knees in order to get back up. And then he's talking about wars. People have to be knocked down in order to get, you know, and I don't like that thing. It don't have to be that way. We don't have to keep repeating the same mistakes. Amen. We don't have to. We have a lesson book here. We have a lot of examples to keep from doing and making the same mistakes. Because then mistakes are costly. We don't get that time back a lot of times. Psalms 112. It says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Oh, wait a minute. I'm in the wrong one. No, that's, that's not what I want. That's 12, not 112. Praise ye the Lord. I like that a lot better. <laughs> Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His commandments are for our protection. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. Praise God for the light. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Boy, I'd like to be in, ever, in remembrance of being righteous. Amen. Amen. He shall not be afraid of evil of tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed... 
He hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away the desire of the wicked shall perish. Those are promises of the Lord for the righteous. And we get that simply by serving the Lord and asking him into our hearts. If there are any here today in closing that have not Ask the Lord into their hearts. Today is a good time for that. For those on the internet, if you need to ask the Lord into your heart for salvation, there is a message right after this that you can do that. Right now as a church, let's just all do it together. And you can on the internet too. But please let us know if you ask the Lord into your heart today. Father God, we believe that Jesus died for our sins. That he took our sins to hell and back. And we no longer have to answer for him. For his righteousness is our righteousness. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. I hope you've listened to the word uh, during this service so that you can have your life changed. You're, you'll see how the DNA of your entire life is about to change. Also, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never made him the Lord of your life, Paul says this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's very simple to do that. All I have to really do is say, Jesus is the Lord of my life, and I believe that God raised him from the dead. That's exactly what Paul said. Many times we have people pray a prayer uh, so that we know that we've drawn a line in the sand and we've let everybody know that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. So I want to do that with you right now so that you can literally say, today is the day and whatever time it is, wherever you're at watching, you'll know that you've had a change in your life. So say this with me. You can bow your head and close your eyes or you can keep your eyes open. Uh, and uh, I, I always love what uh, Oop Schroner who is a prophet of God, said, he said, if you're drowning in a swimming pool at the Holiday Inn, you wouldn't want anybody to close their eyes. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're literally drowning in a swimming pool of sin someplace. So say this with me. Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for me. I confess my sin. I ask you to forgive me of them. And Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And I commit today that I will live for you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, if you just did that, then what you just did is you invited Jesus Christ to live in your life, to be the Lord of your life, and you're going to see a complete change in every area of your entire life right now. If you've watched this broadcast, you also know that uh, what we've talked about at different times uh, through different broadcasts is, is finances. If we, the Bible tells us in Luke 6.38 that if we give, 
that he'll give back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. Then it says, uh, right after that, and this is Luke 6, 38. Then it says, whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. So if you become a covenant partner with us today, there's many things that we do for outreaches here out of this church and out of the ministry, not only here in Weatherford, Texas, but all over the country and all over the world. We uh, have rodeo events right here in the arena where we have, uh, he paid your fees. Simply means that nobody pays to, to enter. They come, we have a devotional, it becomes an outreach opportunity. And we do that in rodeo arenas, horse show arenas, and roping arenas all over the United States. We drill wells and have uh, crusades in Nigeria, Cameroon, Togo, Uganda, and Tanzania. And by doing each one of those, uh, you become, and becoming a covenant partner with this ministry, you become a part of those outreaches. You take part in the reward in the end time, as well as you get back pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. Because you're a covenant partner, and this is good ground. Bible tells us in another place he gives back. Uh, this is in uh, Mark, the 10th chapter. It tells us that he gives back to us some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Well, this ground has been worked. It has is, is been fertilized. And, and I would expect a 100 fold return on that. So there's a uh, website that you've seen. Do two things. One, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, let us know at that website address and we'll send you some information so that you'll be able to walk that walk and succeed in life in your new Christian life. Also, if you give, there's a donate button right there. If you press that donate button and give, that seed gets planted into good ground, and it comes back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Kathleen and I pray every day over every partner of this ministry. So I want to make sure that we're able to pray for you and, and let us know the things that you may have need of in life so that we can bring them before the Father. Have a great day. Remember, Jesus loves you. We love you, and Jesus is Lord.